This video will demonstrate how HEC RAS cross-section locations and geometry can be imported into SMS. It will also cover how that information can be used when building a terrain model. We begin by opening the model in HEC RAS. We can see that the model has many cross-sections defined over the length of a river reach. The cross sections and center line can be exported by going to the main HEC RAS window and selecting File, Export GIS Data, checking the User Defined Cross Sections option, and selecting Export Data. Interpolated cross sections may also be used by SMS so long as they are georeferenced. We will continue without the interpolated cross sections for this demonstration. If we navigate to the file directory where these files were saved out, we find that HEC RAS has exported an SDF file. The SDF file contains the geometry information for the river reaches, center line, and cross sections. When the SDF file is opened in SMS, it will automatically be converted into 1D hydraulic center line and cross section coverages, which are named using the title of the SDF file. They are identified by CL for center line and XSEC for cross section. If we right click the CL coverage in the Project Explorer and go down to Types, we can verify that it is assigned a 1D hydraulic center line type. If we were to select the center line arc in this coverage, we would see that the Z elevation is zero. This is because no elevation data is recorded on the center line. We now select the XSEC coverage item in the Project Explorer to make it active and see the cross sections from the HEC RAS model displayed. If we rotate the angle to a 3D view, we see that the arcs defining each cross section have the elevation data assigned to their nodes and vertices. By selecting a node or vertex on one of the cross sections, the elevation value can be observed in the Edit Window toolbar. If we right-click the Cross Sections coverage in the Project Explorer and look at the type, we can verify that it has been assigned the 1D hydraulic cross section type. So we see how easily an HEC RAS model can be imported into an SMS project and converted into 1D hydraulic coverages. The coverages can now be used with a summary table, which is demonstrated in another video, or simply to use as a reference. In cases where there is sufficient data, the cross sections can be converted to a scatter set and used as a terrain data set for building a 2D model. This is not the case for the model we are using, but we will continue anyway in order to understand why, as well as highlight some common problems one could run into. A 2D scatter set can be created from the cross sections coverage by right clicking the coverage item in the Project Explorer and selecting Convert Map to 2D Scatter. The following dialog gives options for how the cross section arcs will be converted. We want all the points from the vertices and nodes, and so we'll set the Z value source to come from arc end points and vertex elevations. We will set the name to be cross sections, toggle on the option to triangulate the data, and click OK. Once the scatter set has been generated, we can view the triangulated surface using color filled contours. Fairly quickly, we can see that the initial surface has some issues that require attention. Let's take a closer look. By turning on the display of scattered triangles, we can see that the distance between cross sections and the density of points along them has created triangles which are stretched long and thin. Due to bends in some of the cross sections when viewed from plan view, the triangulation has created some vertical walls within the scatter set. 
the triangle pattern along the inside of the angle here is an indication of walls. Rotating our view to 3D shows the vertical walls along the border of the domain of the scatter set and also along the cross sections within the domain. Another issue here is that the channel and Thalweg are not continuous between cross sections. Vertical walls along the outside boundary of the scatter set can be removed by selecting and deleting them manually using the Select Triangle tool. Boundary triangles can be removed in the same manner. Those walls that formed along the inside of cross sections within the scatter set can be corrected using break lines. Break lines are features that force the triangle edges of the scatter set to conform to them. They are typically drawn between existing scatter points with similar elevation values. The triangulation is then adjusted by selecting the Force Break Lines command from the Break Lines menu in the toolbar. We can see how the scatter triangles adjust to conform to the break line and the vertical wall is cleared up. The channel and Thalwig continuity problem is also corrected by this method. Break lines must be added to note the changes in Thalwig location between cross sections for the data to be of valid use in a terrain dataset. This scatter set is converted from the same cross sections, but has had some editing to remove vertical walls and attempt a continuous channel in Thalweg through some cross sections. The reason why these cross sections are not enough to build a terrain model by themselves is made more apparent by showing the centerline coverage. The interpolated surface between the cross sections cannot give a good representation of the Thalweg and channel. For a good terrain model to be created from cross sections, the Thalweg needs to be accurately represented and continuous throughout the model domain. This concludes the Using HEC RAS Geometry with SMS video. Please visit the Federal Highway Administration's website or the SMS Wiki pages to learn more.